Hello, welcome back to Chris's Beer Reviews. How are you? Hope you're doing really well. It's time for a beer and a chat video. I think I've done a beer and a chat for a little while. I think this is probably beer and a chat number five, maybe. Who knows? But let's have a chat. Well, I'll chat. I'll talk to the camera. You can reply in the comments. Maybe I should do these live. Uh, so anyway, let's have a beer and a chat and I'll talk to you about what's on my mind, what topics I want to talk about, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm having a beer. Uh, there it is. Looks rather pleasant, doesn't it? It's a Bellhaven Original Best, the cream of Scottish beer. Um, 3.2% ABV in a 440ml can. It's a draft can, it does have a widget in it. Um, but there it is, 3.2%. You know it's 3.2%. Because it's rather thin. Uh, it's not very nice either. Anyway, beer in the chat. So what I'm gonna talk about uh, the biggest news today is Lucy Letby has been convicted of uh, killing seven babies, which is quite horrendous. I think she was convicted of lots of attempted murders as well. Um, found not guilty for a few attempted murders. Uh, but how horrendous, absolutely horrendous for all those families involved to lose your children and or your baby in, in those circumstances. So yeah, Lucy Letby, she's been found guilty today. I mean, that's got to be a life tariff, surely when sentencing is done for that. I don't know when the sentencing is, but surely that's a life tariff, surely. Um, barbaric, really. But what's annoying with that, uh, as well as it being extremely upsetting, very disturbing, certainly for the people that are investigating that crime, for everyone involved in investigating that, how upsetting that must have been. And some of the jurors were, were in tears today, um, which is awful. And they're gonna have those memories forever, aren't they? You know ordinary members of the public form juries and they get a letter saying they've got to do jury service and it's for a crime like that could affect you couldn't it so some of those are probably going to need some support afterwards so i hope that does happen i hope people that do jury service get support if it's really quite traumatic i bet they don't but i hope they do uh, but the point i was actually getting to is the hospitals and the staff knew about lucy let me in terms of things going wrong long before it was raised with any authorities that the staff knew and nothing was ever done no one ever challenged it no one ever raised it I and mean, obviously eventually somebody did but that took too long it took far too long you know that behavior whatever she was doing should have been challenged a long time before and maybe that would have prevented some of these deaths from happening so that's really bad and that needs investigating just in itself. That nothing was done. Staff would make funny comments about her, you know, strange comments about her. If an alarm went off in the ward, they'd say, oh, has Lucy been on duty? So people knew. All right, they might not have known fully what she was doing, but people knew she was doing something wrong. And that needs investigating, in my opinion. That just in itself needs investigating, and people need to be held accountable for that. Babies have died. That's not on. That is not good enough. So, yeah, found guilty today. Um, awful, awful for so many people involved and awful for her parents as well, knowing that, they're, you know, a child you, you have brought into the world and raised has gone on to commit a, such horrific crimes. Uh, that's pretty awful as parents to live with that as well. And, you know, they're probably going to get lots of grief from people as well, aren't they? Um, so, yeah, it's just awful, awful for everybody involved. And so that's the, the biggest thing in the news today. Michael Parkinson, he's died, hasn't he? Um, shocker. Was it a shocker? You know, I appreciate he's getting on in age, uh, but what a great presenter, a great interviewer. He's done some classic interviews over the years, hasn't he? But people die, don't they? And that's, I was having this conversation the other day with someone. Someone in their life had passed away, and I said, you know what? The older you get, the more people seem to pass away because people older than you do start passing away. So, yeah, I don't really know if I had a point to that, but there you go. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Let's uh, talk about something a little bit more cheerful, shall we? Because this has started off all, <laughs> all very sad. Uh, let's talk about something cheerful. I did make a couple of notes on some things. Uh, let's talk about the whole Northern Monk debacle. So Northern Monk uh, have re released a few of their crazy beers. 
Did they do a four pack? I think Real Out Craft Beer reviewed their four packs. I don't think they have released the four pack. They have. Uh, there's apple crumble beers in there. There's some sort of roast dinner beer in there and a couple of others. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but a few people have reviewed them and said they're absolutely awful and some of the worst beers they've ever had. Um, so what are Northern Monk doing? You know, why have they gone down this kind of tiny rebel road of making just horrendous flavoured gimmick beers some gimmick beers work but overall they don't there's only a few that have ever worked and northern monk have seemed to have been on a train of just pumping out lots of these gimmick style beers especially the new ones that are a bit in a collabby with aunt bess's um it's a shame because northern monk were a great brewery an absolute staple in the supermarkets for craft beer and their craft beers in the supermarkets were fantastic and now they're going down this silly little road which is a shame i don't know why they're doing it i don't know if it's because their sales have dropped and they think this will appeal it's got a gimmicky look to it it will sell initially initially they will sell but people won't go back and buy them again i don't know if it's a quick revenue boost i don't really know but i think it's sad that northern monk have gone down that route of making those types of beers they don't need to i don't know i think it kind of brings you on to the debate about craft beer you know has the craft beer bubble burst and i think i think it kind of has but i don't think hundreds more craft breweries are going to close yeah a few have gone in the last sort of 12 months we have lost a few uh, but i think it's kind of stabilizing a bit from what i've been reading it has stabilized a little bit um and i've i was at the uh, London Craft Beer Festival. I was at the Great British Beer Festival uh, and there were some fantastic breweries there that certainly seem like they're going strong. Certainly at the London Craft Beer Festival, epic venue. It's like a shopping centre of beer. It really is. Just little nooks and crannies and different places and caves almost where there's lots of breweries. There were a lot of breweries there. Absolute huge amount of breweries and they all seem to be doing well. They're all very positive about sales. Uh, ones that I was talking to, I don't talk in great depth about beer and how beer is made and having it much beer they're selling that i'm just interested in beer in terms of drinking it and enjoying it but a couple i'll have a conversation with and see how they're doing uh, and most to be fair were quite honest and said you know they've had some tough times but it's kind of leveled out for them and they're doing some decent beers which is really good so do i think the craft beer bubble has burst in its entirety not in its entirety i think a lot of them are about to have a little wake up and change the way they're doing things uh, but there's still some absolutely fantastic craft breweries out there there's loads there was loads at london craft beer festival and i wish them all well and i hope they all all succeed because the beers are great i think for me it's not so much craft beers burst the bubble on new england ipas is burst we're a bit bored of, of new england ipas aren't we you know they came out they were great we got used to them we've got bored of them we want something else <laughs> uh, and, and a lot of people are asking for more kind of back to traditional beers like decent bitters good lagers uh, and a lot of breweries are doing that which is really good news and a lot of people are also reviewing german beers i've reviewed a couple of german beers but german beers are solid all the time from day one of when that brewery opened and some of them have been open many many years nothing changes because their beers are just so consistently good I think a lot of the problem in the UK is a lot of breweries' beers aren't consistently good and they have to keep revamping and redoing and, and coming out with new beers. When you look at German and Czech, Czech Pilsners, etc., they're the same. They don't change and they still sell and the country loves them <laughs> and we love them. Uh, so I think in the UK with the craft beer, there was just this big boom of New England IPAs, Fruity Parallels and etc. That bubble was always going to burst and for me it has. So I think a lot of them are having to kind of revisit their model, stick to core ranges. Um, but then some beer breweries that I was talking to were saying that they're reducing their core range because people are now back, going back to saying that they want a new beer, they want something new and something different. Yeah, we do want things different, but I think a good core range will always sell. Uh, Mad Squirrel's core range I love, and you can buy a box of Mad Squirrel's core range beers in uh, Costco. That's fantastic. It never changes. The standard is always the same and it should. And that is what will keep sales going. I think when breweries mix and match too much, bring out a new beer, get rid of that one, start another one. I think they just kind of lose their way. Having a good core range 
for me, I think is a good thing with a brewery. So craft beer bubble, a bit of it has burst, but I'm glad to hear that a lot's leveling out and people are doing okay. Uh, and like I say, there's plenty of breweries at the London Craft Beer Festival. As in terms of Northern Monk, um, I think they're in a very slippery slope if they don't change what they're doing. Don't be known for your gimmick beers. It's not a good look. Um, Tiny Rebel have kind of made a, made a business out of it, but I, I don't believe Tiny Rebel are, are doing anywhere near as good as they used to. So Northern Monk, get back, get back to what you do best. Start making some decent beers again, not these silly ones. That's all I'm going to say. And um, other news, I do have a pad where I've written things down. In another news, other news, another news, uh, Carlsberg are dropping the ABV on Carlsberg. I mean, I haven't had Carlsberg lager for years, uh, but they're dropping it from 3.8% to 3.4% ABV. I mean, it's a bad enough beer as it is. But dropping that to 3.4%, we all know why. It's all to do with the new tax uh, duties that have come in uh, around ABVs. We know damn well that's what it's all about, the new tax duties. Um, I wrote down a comment of what someone at Carlsberg said. It said, in line with government alcohol duty reforms and as a policy makers intended, which I don't really understand that bit, I'm going to read it again. In line with government alcohol duty reforms and as a policy makers intended, Reducing the ABV of Carlsberg Danish Pilsner, Pilsner enables us to invest in innovation and our portfolio. So reducing the ABV of Carlsberg Danish Pilsner, which isn't Danish, it's brewed in the UK, enables us to invest in innovation and our portfolio. What does that mean? Invest in innovation, because your beers are crap, Carlsberg. The majority of Carlsberg Marsden beers are, are crap. You get the odd one, that's okay. Um, but Carlsberg lager itself or Pilsner is shockingly bad and now they're going to reduce that to 3.4 um, because it enables them to invest in innovation it's not it's to do with tax you know it's all to do with tax duty you said so at the beginning of that statement uh, and in our portfolio what you're going to go out and buy some more craft breweries and ruin them as well is that what you mean with work by working on your portfolio uh, and then further down into the article that I read on that they then started talking about the health benefits and saying how they're health conscious and want to help people. Um, choice, what's happening to choice? Why can't people choose what they want to eat and drink and what ABV they want? Don't get me wrong, uh, alcoholism it is awful, uh, but where's the choice? You know, that you should still be allowed a choice. It irritates me. To say it's about health it, it, it is utter rubbish. It is just utter rubbish. The Carlsberg used to have a special brew, which used to be up in the 9%, didn't it? I think that's down to around about 7%. That's all to do with tax. It's got nothing to do with health. It is all to do with money, nothing to do with health. Um, so to say it's about health, I, I find that a bit irritating from Carlsberg, uh, but they're just quite an irritating company, to be fair. The Danish Pilsen is rubbish. Uh, Carlsberg export is a little bit better, but still generally rubbish. Most Carlsberg labelled beers are rubbish. Um, so dropping the, the ABV on that, I just think give it a rest, Carlsberg. You know, just give it a rest and just say what it's about. It's about money. 3.4%. We'd be calling that, a, might as well call it Carlsberg Light. You know, you're getting down to that realm, aren't you, really? Shocking. Now, this beer is quite shocking. Um, it's not very nice. The cream of Scottish beer. I very much doubt this is the cream of Scottish beer. I like the can. Great looking can. It was. I mean, it is cheap. It's three pounds seventy nine for four cans, so less than pound a can. It is very very cheap. Uh, it's a draft can, so it is quite a big looking can. Uh, but it's not, just not a very nice beer, to be quite honest. I don't even know if I will review that, but it's not very pleasant. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Because uh, I'm pretty much done, really. I didn't have a huge amount to talk about. Quite boring, aren't I, really? Um, now, the Lionesses are in the Women's World Cup final, so well done to them. Well done on getting to the final. I don't really watch much women's football. Uh, I did watch a little bit at the beginning of the World Cup, and I did not expect England to make the final from what I saw in the, their early games. I didn't think they were very good. So they've got to the final, so that's a massive achievement. So good luck to them in the final. Let's hope uh, they can win the final. It's against Spain. Uh, so good luck to the Lionesses in the final. Hope you do well. Uh, and that's about it, really. 
Is there anything else I can think about or think of to talk about? Probably not. I just fancied a chat and there's no one in, so I thought I'd just have to chat to the camera instead. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, I've got nothing else to chat about, really. Uh, if there's any topics you do want me to talk about, put them in the comments and maybe one day, uh, if, if I get enough, I'll tell you what I'll do. Because I don't do enough lives, I know that, and I know I should do some. If I get enough topics that I think I can talk about for a good hour or so and get interaction with the people that are watching and putting comments, if I can get enough topics that we, people want me to talk about, I'll do it on a live. So put it in the comments, put something in the comments about a topic you would like me to discuss, and if I've got any knowledge of it, I'll discuss it, and I'll do it on a live. There you go, humble done. See you soon. Take care, bye now.